Hi friends, uh, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm trying to cover all the new changes, document required and caution while filling OCI application, especially how to avoid disappointment of paying extra to appointed service provider. So this video is going to be a little lengthy and I will try to cover minutest detail to ensure form is correctly filled first time. My suggestion is you go through this video once completely that way you know what exactly you're doing and if you feel that uh, you are comfortable doing the form and you need anything specific then you can look at the timestamp. All relevant link which I'm showing on the video will be there in the description. So make sure you look at the description to find all the right links. If you talk about the realistic timeline of getting OCI, again, this is my experience. I have applied for OCI thrice. After acquiring citizenship, you would apply for your passport. In my case, I'm in Canada, so I applied for Canadian passport. After applying, it came within 10 days. Once that was there in my hand, I had to initiate for the surrender of India passport. So here the process is that you fill up the application online. I made a video on this. You take the printout of that application with attached document and fee, send it to the uh, consulate general or high commission depending on where you are and this happens through a ministry of external affairs appointed agency in canada it is bls uh, singapore if you are in us australia it is vfs you will have to check your country who the appointed agency is and you send this document to them they in turn take that uh, with the high commission or uh, uh, consulate general of india and uh, then you get your india passport which is punched and cancelled written on the passport with a certificate of surrender so that's how the surrender certificate process happens and here the timeline is four to six weeks so say uh, it would take approximately one and a half months for you to get this certificate only when you have this surrender certificate you can apply for oci once you apply for oci the timeline is four to six weeks and so if you talk about in a straight line method it's almost a little more than three months process from the time you acquire citizenship you get your uh, passport surrender your india passport and get your oci in case you have any immediate travel plan after getting citizenship you can go through my other video where uh, people who had limited time and could not surrender the passport or get the oci how they went and surrendered this passport in india the process is little expensive and it might also be time consuming so be careful with this however there is a grace period for the travel which you can find i'm sharing the government link where you get to see how this can be done and a lot of people have shared their experience uh, on my video which you can go and watch this is one part now if you are a foreign spouse the process is a little different as there is a wait period of two years before you can apply and you also go through a process of interview also there is a separate video on indian born minor and foreign born minor so you can check out that video where i have shared the information for you to do your application correctly anytime there is change to the process uh, whether it is document requirement the fee update all of those things it was difficult to track and keep you updated so what i have done is on my website here is the organized link and if you come here i have uh, categorized these these are the videos and uh, here whichever is the latest one i keep the latest one here so that way you know that you're going to the latest video and you have the updated one so these videos i'm sure will be handy for you if you're looking for anything related to uh, india everything is organized here if you're looking for business in canada or us i've been documenting that journey too this is the best way to come and find my latest video so if i made multiple version of oci video you will find the only most updated one here so that way you don't have to go and figure out and you have to search for the detail so this is the official link where you have to come and fill the form and what is important is that you go through this requirement 
if you have a question that can you apply for OCI while in India? So the answer is that you will not be able to apply while you are on a tourist visa, missionary visa and mountaineering visa. Moreover, you'll have to be ordinarily resident in India to be eligible to apply for OCI registration in India. So you need to have stayed for at least continuous six months. That is, you know, the criteria. So the best way to do is do it from the country where you are currently from. And with that, here to proceed. This is a very important page. Uh, not many people utilize the right way. First thing is anytime you have a new OCI registration, by default, uh, this page opens and you go through this uh, prerequisite and then you proceed. So when you're filling your application, you have a option to come here and you see here document re-upload. So when you're filling the application, in case you want to re-upload the document, you can come to this section you see here and uh, you can proceed from here. How we will get to see once we are into the video and any image upload or signature upload you see this is the place make sure you are using this and also when you have filled the application here until and unless you have done the payment to the service provider in case you find any mistake with the form you can just leave that form and create a new OCI registration whichever is the complete OCI application which you are confident that this is the correct one make sure you are sending that application to the service provider along with the requisite document and the fee if you wanted to know if you can create multiple application so every time you create an application you will get a unique code and whichever is the complete application make sure you are sending that application to the service provider here you can reprint the submitted application and uh, i'm assuming that you have gone through with this okay make sure you're reading this and then the prerequisite here you need to have documents in pdf format only maximum size 1000 kb so i'll show you how you can make sure that your document is in pdf format in case if it is in any format and also keep the file reference number of your application along with passport number now we are on the new oci registration just make sure you are reading this entirely before you start prerequisite and uh, after registration so once you're done with click proceed and go through this instruction for filling of application i'll show you how this is done but make sure you are reading this and that way you will be confident of what is getting filled once you click i have read instruction accept now you will get this captcha which you have to enter and then enter so here you see there are two sections fill new application complete partially filled application so anytime you're filling the new application make sure you're noting down that ARN number and you're saving the document as you keep proceeding with the application that way wherever you have stopped you will be able to enter the ARN number here and you can resume your your application from there make sure to note down the ARN number a lot of people miss this and they have to start their application all over again once you click on fill new application so this is the application form and here you select the place of submission i am selecting canada so you will have to select the country from where you are okay so i have selected canada and then mission for me it's toronto you will have to select the mission from your jurisdiction so i have selected toronto here then given name and surname as it is given in your current passport so make sure you're not making any mistake if there has been any name change between your current passport and your previous indian passport you have to give your current passport name here and also if there is any name change you will be sending a notarized affidavit document photocopy along with the application so th that will go as a additional document along with the application so that is one thing now in case you just have a given name and you don't have any surname in that case you have to just write this xxxxx this is universally accepted and uh, you can have your given name written here in case you have any confusion best is to contact the service provider check with them and make an entry and uh, whenever you're filling anything like this xx xxx make sure on a plain piece piece of paper you are giving the explanation if you have ever changed your name you tick this box and then you enter your previous surname name this detail so i'm unchecking this box coming to the sex 
you select the sex and then date of birth make sure it matches with the passport so your passport is the guiding document on which everything what you're filling will go in here date of birth is entered country of birth again if you are born in india you will enter that detail so for this application i'm showing india born person who has surrendered the passport and is filling the application if it is not the case then you select the country of birth and state of birth that gets entered and place of birth current nationality so this part country of birth state of birth place of birth it will already be there in your india passport so just make sure it matches with the india passport because you will be submitting your india passport along with this the one which is cancelled now don't uh, leave this national identification number blank even though it is not having asterisk here you enter your current passport if you are from canada you enter your canadian passport if you are from us you enter your us passport number so make sure you are doing that entry then visible mark just enter the visible mark to best of your ability if there are no visible mark then you write no visible mark so don't leave this blank again depending on what you choose from here marital status separated but divorced married unmarried divorcee widow widower you will choose the option here i have chosen married and when you choose the married section then additional section opens where your spouse detail also you will be entering when you are filling this application applicant's passport detail here you enter your passport detail which will be the repetition of this number what you entered here date of issue expiry place of issue now if you are in canada you will have issuing authority mentioned and like when i look at my passport it says issuing authority toronto so that is what i have entered as place of issue so make sure you are opening your passport and checking what is written if there is any confusion call up the service agency and whomever you are speaking to make sure you note the person's name time and date when you spoke to that person and keep that as a reference in case you want to contest any time then previous passport number here a lot of people have confusion uh, is it the india passport number the answer is no this previous passport number will be in case you had for example you had a old canadian passport which you renewed and the one which you currently have is a different passport number in that case you mention your canadian passport the old one here if not just write na so in case you have just acquired your citizenship for, for a new country your response here will be n a okay so once this is done in the applicant's family detail in your india passport your father's name and mother's name would be there make sure you are entering as per how it is given there and uh, whatever their profession was so from this drop down you can select the profession whichever is the closest one now in case parents are no more still you choose their last profession and that way your application remains complete so make sure you're not leaving this blank and uh, once this is done then the spouse detail comes and here the question is are you applying oci on basis of indian spouse spouse's oci card here if you are a foreign spouse then the response would be yes and in that case there are other things to be done for which i have made a separate video so here the response is no and then spouse name spouse nationality so sometimes the confusion is if both of you have gone with your citizenship process together and you are applying for your oci card together in that case your spouse's current passport if it is canada passport you will make that entry here even though the oci has not been got even though surrender certificate has not been got you would enter the current nationality because the nationality has changed now in case it is still the old nationality then you make that entry here then spouse profession from this drop down you can select any one of them whichever is the closest one and uh, then date of birth as it will be in spouse passport because that document will go then marriage registration date it is as per your marriage registration document date if marriage has happened on a particular date and the marriage registration happened on separate date then the date when the marriage registration happened that is the date you will mention if you still need clarity as i said always call up the service agency and get clarity on what needs to be done so then comes the passport number passport issue date 
and expiry date issue place as i told earlier it is going to be the same here now relationship with the root indian relation with root indian here it will be self because you have recently surrendered your india passport and then you are applying for oci even if your spouse is still indian in this section you will choose self okay so i hope this makes it clear and as you complete this form make sure you are saving the form like this and whenever you save you get this temporary id so make sure you copy this id and keep it somewhere just by mistake if you exit or even for some reason you exit you can come and start application from where you left make sure you copy this temporary application id in the occupation detail you select the occupation from this drop down whichever is closest and um, in case you are a housewife you select housewife in case you are unemployed you can select others and then mention the detail here and also you will send detail on a piece of paper that i was employed in a private sector earlier and now currently i am unemployed because what happens is whatever occupation you enter here that reflects on your oci card for the adult for the minor child they don't mention but for the adult they mention the occupation whatever is chosen here so be careful and choose the occupation which is the closest and uh, let me select this then you enter the address of employer in case you are self employed then in that case you can give your address whichever you have and uh, the contact number can be yours in that case because you are self employed and uh, on a piece of paper make sure you are making that mention that uh, i am self employed hence i have given the employer contact number as my number so as long as you are able to explain and justify that should hold good then coming to the applicant's address detail make sure whatever document you are submitting if it is driving license it matches with that address so exactly the way the address is written there make sure you are making the entries here and uh, the zip and pin code you make an entry like this without any space so i have shown for toronto usually this is how the code is so without any space this is entered mobile number that gets entered if you don't have a telephone number enter your spouse's number make sure this is not blank and if not you enter your mobile number again here and the blank piece paper which you will be submitting in that you can add that i only have a mobile number then comes the email id so as long as you are not uh, leaving anything blank all is good once this is done you can either save and exit if you are saving and exiting make sure you have this temporary application id with you if not you can continue next so once you click next you see whatever entry you have made the same entry is reflecting here you get to verify this so i always tell check recheck cross check if you have any question the best way is to connect with the service agents if you are in canada you call a bls and get things clarified once that is done you can go and submit this is the time when you can go and modify if you click modify you go back and you can edit uh, the way it is once you submit you go through and you feel that everything is correct you submit then this is the upload section for the signature and photo and uh, here you can go through the uploading photo specification i'll show you a simple way to make sure that uh, it matches with the requirement for the photo specification you click here and this is the sample photo they have given the size has to be 2 inch by 2 inch 51 mm by 51 mm and they have given how the background has to look they have also given the do's and don'ts so make sure you don't take photos like this and uh, it is clearly visible so they have given the sample what is the correct one you can go and read this document and how to check if this matches the required specification like this for this what you can do is you can come to this tool the link is in the description this tool canva once you create a design and custom size you see here here you can add the width and height right now it's in pixel if you make it in inch okay you remember 2 inch by 2 inch you can create a new design or if it is in mm 51 by 51 mm so once you create a new design this is the size of the photo what is required all you need to do is bring your photo and 
drop it here so once you drop it you see here this is how you can just make sure that the size matches if you have taken from a professional photo studio they will give this dimension and you can just come and verify the dimension this way you will get to know that this is the size which is as per the requirement and then you can go and just download this download as jpeg so this is one way to make sure it is foolproof also to make sure that this is not larger than 500 kb how you can check once you come to the photo right this is the photo you see here it shows 200 kb which is less than what is given as maximum so it is good even if you find that this is on a higher side there is one more trick all you need to do is open this in paint and in paint you have this selection here resize or skew so here you can just reduce the percentage instead of 100 you make it 50 and when you make this 50 and save it the size also reduces this way you will get the desired size however when you download with canva it will give you a compressed form and uh, i'm sure the size will not exceed so this is one way to make sure that everything matches with the requirement the photo and the signature has to be in jpeg format make sure when you're downloading it is in jpeg format and when it comes to the signature the ratio has to be in 1 is to 3 ratio height and width again to do this we can go to canva in canva create a new design custom size the size will be 3 is to 3 will be the width and 1 will be the height and here i have kept inch then you create a design now you see this is the signature box which will give you that 1 is to 3 ratio and again now all you do is bring your signature so here you can do a signature on a piece of paper you can take photo through your mobile camera or if you have a scanner you can scan that and then bring this signature here like this so this is it right now in 3 is to 1 ratio and you see the signature you just need to make it to that ratio ensuring that the signature remains within without crossing this line what i mean by crossing is when you take this this is how it should not be so make sure the signature is well within this range and uh, now you can download this as jpeg here you go download and then jpeg so once you download this is your 3 is to 1 ratio what is required the photo and signature both are as per requirement we have made sure it is as per requirement and then yes i am ready with the image here you upload the photo once you upload you also have an option to crop here okay right now we made this with canva so exactly the dimension matches if it is not matching you have an option to crop here once you click here see crop you can just drag and drop so that way it gets adjusted and it shows the image the one which will get seen here and this is what comes on your oci card so once the crop selection is done you just keep that and then you come to applicant signature section and upload you can see here again the dimension matches so there is no need to crop if you feel like you need to crop you can click here so you can see here it says applicant signature which you have selected is as per instruction if you want to change then click crop button and drag the white selection area or else directly upload the original image so if you want to crop this you can click here and then you can drag it if you want this is something which can be done once this is done just click upload the image has been uploaded your photo and signature which will come on your ocr card this is how it will be so you'll be able to see this part now this temporary application id along with this you also note down your file reference number so anytime you are coming back you will be able to start from where you left here you have option to upload this photo again and uh, signature also you can upload again in case you want if you don't want to upload again i have uploaded successfully click here and then your file reference number as i said this is your file reference number and there's a list of document which are required again this could be confusing just follow the video and everything will be fine so once you finish this part come to proceed to part b 
in the part b just go through this detail one by one carefully have you any member of your family applied for overseas citizen of india registration earlier if the answer is yes they will ask for name and relationship reference number date when applied place where applied and status if you open the old application of uh, your family member you will be able to see the file reference number written here and then the application date mentioned like this so the other way to look at uh, which i also found out is to look at the oci card and at the bottom section either it it will be in the uh, front portion of the oci card or at the back portion in my oci card i am able to see where my picture has been put with the signature just underneath they have this file reference number written however i am not able to find the date what you could do is you could call up the service agency give them the file reference number and maybe they can help you finding the date or if that is also not a possibility then they would you know suggest what to do in most probability they would just say write a handwritten note that uh, you don't remember the date so do check with this service agency that way you are covered since they all have asterisk you will have to enter the detail any of your family member did get oci in the past if you are applying together then this won't be applicable let me make it no and then have you surrendered got your previous overseas citizen of india card cancelled you will have to choose your response here the response is no whether holding dual nationality if you are holding a dual nationality then you choose yes and then you mention the country and the country's passport number here the response is no have you sought asylum you have to choose your response whether the applicant has ever been citizen of pakistan or bangladesh at any time you have to choose your response and depending on yes you would have seen that for the citizen of pa pakistan and bangladesh the oci will not be given you can check the information which was given at the start then have you ever been convicted by court of law of any country you have to choose your response have you been refused entry deported by any country including india you have to choose your response have you been associated with any organization government or non government political party group accused of or guilty of any right violation you have to choose your response have you ever been engaged in human trafficking you have to choose your response have you ever been engaged in cyber crime all of these you have to choose your response have you ever by any mean or medium expressed view that justifies or glorifies terrorist violence you have to choose your response whether either of your parent grandparent or great grandparent grandparents of applicant had ever been citizen of pakistan or bangladesh at any time if yes give specific detail again if you go and read the instruction they have mentioned the date before which if they were part it doesn't affect but if the date is after then it becomes a challenge so you'll have to go and read that instruction here the response you choose whether the applicant other than minor child has worked is working in armed forces paramilitary police security intelligence organization if yes give specific detail no okay then have you undergone compulsory military police home conscription training in your native country so you choose your response accordingly are you still serving in armed forces pol police force beyond compulsory training period prescribed by rule in that country you choose your response whether applicant is currently under any investigation you choose your response wanted for questioning you choose your response facing charges for any offense in any country you choose your response once you do this then comes present nationality details here the applicant's name by default comes the nationality will also show based on what you filled this acquisition method let me try to give you a brief citizenship by birth this is no brainer automatically become citizen just by being born there for example my daughter she was born in canada so she is a automatically canadian citizen citizenship by descent this means you become citizen because one or both of your parents are citizen of that country for instance you now know that in canada if if your parents are canadian and you were born in any other country you might still be able to get canadian citizenship based on your parent citizenship by registration this is the process where certain people who uh, those with special connection to a country can apply to become citizen for example this might include a spouse of citizen or uh, people who have some heritage or connection to that country citizenship by other means 
this can be a special case where citizenship is granted under unique circumstances such as exceptional contribution to country or other special criteria for example i'm sure you would remember this incident where an immigrant from mali who was in france saved this child and he was immediately granted citizenship by that country so these are very exceptional circumstances and citizenship by naturalization that is when a person who wasn't born in that country doesn't have any parent from that country goes through a legal process to become citizen for example i came here on pr and then i applied for citizenship gone through the requirement that is number of year passing language fulfilling other requirement and i became a citizen of canada so in that case citizenship by naturalization is what i would be selecting so here if it is naturalization you would enter the date when you got your citizenship oath done and certificate when did you get it that date you mention okay so once that is entered other details previous nationality you have to choose your previous nationality in my case it is india and then the passport number that is india passport number which got cancelled so enter that india enter the india passport number and then do you have relatives staying in india you will have to choose your response yes or no my response here is yes and i entered parent detail make sure the present address is in full no abbreviation nothing and uh, in case you have any question regarding which all relatives you can enter call up the service provider check with them and make an entry here you can keep adding member as much as you want in case parents are there brother sisters they are there it, it's a straight case otherwise just call up the service provider and check with them how you can enter this detail has any of the applicant uh, faced criminal proceeding you have to choose your answer the response here is no and then submit See, while i was doing this application the application did not go through and now all i'm doing is i'm coming to new oci registration i have read the instruction and accept so once this is done enter the captcha and here instead of filling new application complete partially filled application click here enter the temporary application id and then enter enter the captcha and now i am back to the application where i had fit so i can continue the part click here and then fill in all this detail again this is the upload section once you click here so there's a list of document you see here current passport for example the canadian passport which is the new passport the information page will get uploaded in canada passport only the front page has the information where your photo signature and other details are there unlike india where it is front and back so in case your passport has information on front and back whichever page it is make sure you are uploading those files and not the blank ones so once that is uploaded employment work letter if you have employment work letter from your company you can upload that if not you can write to your hr to give an employment letter where basic detail like your name designation from when you are working those basic details are there including the hr's address and uh, you can upload that in case you are self employed then on a blank piece of paper you can write that you are self employed and uh, the address what is mentioned is your own address and uh, then give specific detail on nature of work what you do so that should take care in case you are a housewife then just write housewife and that should be okay so once that is done you can upload that document here for the employment work letter for the indian origin proof you select the proof from here and uh, the previous indian passport of self in case it is you and then make sure you are uploading the front back and where it is written cancelled so that you need to upload in case you want to be extra cautious you can make this into a one single pdf file along with your surrender certificate and upload it is not required just in case you want to have it done because you would be sending the surrender certificate as a physical photocopy along with the application this is done and then if you are married you would upload your marriage certificate so any time you have to upload a document this has to be in a pdf file and uh, there is a maximum size limit as i showed you can check the size limit the way i had showed uh, previously for the photo however to make a pdf document 
come to file and here you can create a custom size so the typical a4 size is uh, make it 11 inch by 14 inch so you now know that typically this is how the page will be and then what you do is your document image if you have taken that on a phone that document image you drag and drop so once that is done you can just adjust and you will be able to see that the image what you have pasted here is clear or not make sure it is clear and then you can keep adding the page and dropping other document for example now we have these three documents okay so once this is there go to share and here when you download you have to select pdf standard so this is the one which can be used for sending email once you select this and you download see this is the downloaded image and this is 259 KB, which is well within the requirement. Once we open this, this is the document. So you can keep adding as many as page and make it into PDF this way. So you see all these four documents have been uploaded and uh, you can re-upload this, but there is a limit allowed. So in fact, re-upload five times and document you can view three times after which it is not allowed. So be careful before you upload, make sure you check, recheck, cross-check and only then you upload. Once this is done, final submit and generate registration form. So now your document has been sent and you got the PDF version with which you have to submit along with the supporting document further for the process. And as I said before, after submission, you realize that you have made a mistake. Don't worry. You can go and create a new application. Make sure you are sending the right file number along with the supporting document and it should all be good. And also, I have tried to give you input to best of my ability. I am a human. I could make mistake. In case you find something, please use the comment section and that will help anyone who is coming to watch this video. And even if you have minutest detail, call up the service provider because they are the receiving people who will have your document. So you can confirm with them what documents are required and that way it will save a lot of time and energy for you, especially the costly mistake which people make and end up paying more money. This is the completed application. So all these pages are here. Make sure to take print out of all page. There are seven page and uh, including instruction for filling of application form. Frankly speaking, if you ask me, the printout is not required, but people have been charged $5 per page by the service provider for not having this. So make sure you take all seven page printout. Here is the service provider for Canada. You will have to select your country and check who the service provider is. And if you look at this uh, India Visa Application Center in Canada, here they have given the jurisdiction. Toronto has Manitoba, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland. So if you are from these places and they have also given detail like Ontario except applicant residing at postal code starting with letter K and Quebec except applicant residing at postal code starting with letter J, H and K. Go through this to find which jurisdiction you belong to. So Ottawa, they have given a long list here and same with Vancouver. So this way you can find for your country, your jurisdiction and then proceed with the application. So I will choose Toronto once I proceed. These links will be there in the description by the way. You see here OCI checklist for Toronto. The checklist is given here. Click. You will take print out of this checklist and in this checklist, first part is the checklist itself, which is this. So you will verify this. You can either write verified or you can tick whatever is your preference. Online application form, the one which we filled, that will be attached. Surrender certificate, that will get attached. India passport, original and copy. So a lot of people have confusion here and they have made costly mistake. That is, in case you are going physically to the service provider, in that case, carry original with you because it will be there with you. You show to them and get it back then and there. You are not handing over to them. In case you are sending it by courier, there have been mistakes made by people. They have sent their original document and they never got it back. 
So don't make that mistake. If you are sending it by courier, no original passport or certificate to be sent. Make sure and don't make the mistake what others made. So if you're going physically, carry all original and make sure you're getting back all originals. If you're sending it by courier, only photocopies will go. So we are done with the Indian passport, foreign citizenship certificate. Again, as I said, original only when you go physically. Canadian passport, only you carry original when you visit physically. Otherwise, just a copy. Registered marriage certificate, you attach this copy and the spouse passport copy if married. In case you both are applying for OCI together, in this case, spouse Canada passport or foreign passport, which is the new that one will go and professional detail of the applicant as i said if you have anything from the company you will send that copy if not on a plain piece of paper you can write it down and attach proof of address i talked about uh, proof of address when we were filling in the application whatever proof of address based on which you enter the address i said mirror the address the way it is written in the document in case of any confusion call up the service provider and then make an entry so once that is done you will attach the proof of address in most cases driving license has all the detail i upload a driving license as the proof of address and then we will talk about fees photograph again i showed the specification so this photograph only one copy of photograph will go what i did was i just kept on top of the application and i secured that with the u clip that way it is not getting lost i did not punch the photo but just attach that with the u clip and that ensure that it is going safe and then if you want to be more cautious you can put then that in a small envelope and then maybe you can attach with the stapler not on the photo but on the envelope so these are the things which you can do and all the photocopies make sure you are self-attesting self-attestation is nothing but you sign on that document your signature and you could just write certified true copy or ctc so that should do make sure you're doing that in the marriage certificate because both your names will be there your spouse and you both will sign in spouse passport it will be spouse who will be doing the signature and that should take care in case you want to add your signature do that so there's no harm don't leave the photocopy blank without any self-attestation once this is all done this is the photo specification which is given and in case you have any clarification required as i said call up the service provider to know what exactly is needed i sent it by courier i did not face any challenge i'm yet to hear anyone who had challenge when sending it by courier but surprises have been when someone is going physically to the service provider and uh, there have been cases where they have been asked to photographs again in the service provider's place where they were charged $15 for each photograph. So these are the things, you know, you can prepare yourself even before you're sending your document. So recently the fee had undergone revision for the OCI card. This is the new card. The fee now is $376 for Canada. This is Canadian dollar and you will have to check for your country what the fee is. In my case, it is jurisdiction Toronto. For each jurisdiction, go and check what the charges are. For example, it is given here and this is payable in name of Consulate General of India, Toronto. So accordingly, if you go to your jurisdiction, what that payable is that is shown, this will be in form of a draft which you will have to get it from your bank so one thing is when you're getting this made from bank you can ask them to waive off the fee if you are a regular customer with bank they will not charge in my case they waived it off otherwise they will charge approximately ten dollar per draft so each individual will be submitting separate earlier it was a different case but now each individual has to submit separate so consulate general of india toronto 376 dollar and then a separate draft for pls international services canada inc so their processing fee has reduced to $1.70. You have to take this separately. For each of the application, you will make one draft of $3.76 and one draft of $1.70. So both will be separate. And then in case you're doing a walk-in, 
you can check with the service provider you still would have to give a draft for the consulate general of india toronto however for the service provider i think they will take the fee directly through your card so you can check with them otherwise you will have to carry these two separately so each one separate this one and separate this one so once this is made there is a courier fee this is when you take a courier service from the service provider again if you have to take a courier service call on this number and once you call i think the selection is one and then three so once you get in for the oci ask them for the courier fee they will send a link to your email id they will create a courier detail and send the link to you for you to submit the courier fee online if there are three applicant it will be three separate link it can come to the same id but it has to be paid separately because uh, nowadays each person's courier goes and comes separately so check the courier fee and when i used the courier service i was in for a surprise because there were few charges which i had not even availed service for i made a separate video and uh, i got my money also back after i brought the discrepancy to bls and in my case even i had to reach out to cgi so you can watch that video and i did get a significant amount when i surrendered my india passport and when i applied for oci so that might be of interest to you and once everything is done you have submitted your application either by courier or by walking in to the service provider's location wait for 4 to 6 week before the oci card comes in your hand have patience in my case the oci card came first and i could see the update almost one or two days later so don't be surprised if that happens just have patience and wait for 4 to 6 weeks once you have your oci card you can travel to india any time so friend that brings end to this video in case you come across any point which needs highlight please let me know and that way i can keep that updated on the comment section for you to come and find the right resource and right update thanks for watching